Welcome Fanlanders to the channel. If you're new to the channel, I'm Daniel. Give us a like and subscribe. Today we're going to talk cover crops briefly really and try and get ourselves some cover crops ordered. So we like the whole idea of regenerative farming, don't we? So, you said it right. Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. it's quite a mouthful <laughs> for someone who's been sat in a combine for four hours. We do a lot already, don't we, Ed? Yeah, um, yeah. But we want to just push it a bit further. So we're here with my very good friend, Ed Moore from Acorn Seeds. Uh, we've been dealing with your dad for a long time. A long time. A long time. Would it be seventies, eighties? Yeah. Seventies, yeah. eighties. So um, yeah, we um, have a good partnership and always get the cover crops we want. But we just wanted to expand on that a little bit. I think, didn't we? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, push it. Traditionally, um, used to be called a, seed, a seedsman, but I'm also an agronomist. Okay. So I do I do a lot of agronomy. For, that's actually how I got into cover uh, cover crops was through potato agronomy and looking at the biofumigants mm -hmm. and, yeah. and from there it's, it's sort of, you know, my interest carried on into, into, in, in, into curry, cover, cover crops and I've got, you know, people have different views, some, some people like, like to have loads of species in a mix, you know, some people have up to six, seven species, I, I tend to just do the work I've done over, well, it's nearly 10 years I've been doing, you could say cover crops that I've tend, you know, learned on the way and learned through other institutions like uh, PGRO who, who are essentially uh, the organisation that, that do a lot of the research on pulses. You know, they've done a lot of work on things like uh, black oats and vets to try and reduce foot rot. And so I've based a lot of my learnings off, off other research institutes, but also stuff that it is a bit tri trial and error. But it's, it started off probably a little bit bl blasé with regards to, well, let's just have a greening crop, let's just put something in. And then, and then now it's become a, a lot more specialist, which being, yeah. a, being an agronomist, um, so it's sort of... Yeah, tick, tick, my box really. We, we've done exactly the same thing, you know, on the phone to your dad and yourself, yeah. like, we need a biofume again because we were worried that nemothorin might disappear. And that's how we basically got into that. And, um, but we've also learned along the way, you know. Yeah. White mustards are not so hot for the biofume again, but also, we, I drilled a field last year and I, I left it all season. It was a bit for the pheasants mainly. Yeah. And uh, when I came to plough it, um, the seagulls weren't across the whole field, but the seagulls turned up when I started ploughing, which means you've got massive worm activity. Would it be alright if we start kind of from the very beginning and say, what is a cover crop? Uh, yeah, well basically a cover crop is just a crop in the rotation. Um, for, for us, we're growing, uh, well we're on fourth and fifth weeks now. We're on sugar beet and potatoes, so in between sugar beet and potato crops, we have a time after cut, cutting wheat to stick a cover crop in put a cover crop in and yeah, make use of the land. Uh, not only is it good for the wildlife, like the mustards and stuff we grow, obviously yeah. we're producing a pollen source for bees right through October. Yeah. Um, as where all their natural food is fairly well run out by the end of September, they're still going around here in October, November. Yeah, so I think I pretty much nailed that, am I, Ed? What would, what would you say, Ed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm the... Let's have a pro opinion on the uh, cover crop not, question. Not well, well the, the, clues, the clues in the name, really, is exactly that. I mean, essentially, you're looking to cover what is what is traditionally would have been bare land. A lot of the time, you'd have had fallow land to have a break from, it might have been after a spring barley or, or, or a wheat, before then your next crop, um, which could be could be probably in the, in the, in the spring or might even be the autumn. So you've got your short-term um, cover crops, which they used to call catch crops, still yeah. do in cases. Which is what we're growing. Sorry, Ed. Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah. Which is what then, we're yeah. growing, yeah. And then you've got your cover crops, which are, which are a, lo a longer term. So they've got you know, yeah, a longer period in the ground. And like Dan was saying, if you're, if you're somebody that's growing three, four weeds, then you do need that, that break, one, to, to reduce your buildup of diseases, such as take all. Yeah. Um, and, um, but also, it's just to balance, balance the microorganisms in the soil as well, which is why by having multi, what you might call, say multi-species, so you might have like a mustard, you might have a vetch, you might have a phacelia, all of which are different species that do a different job, but together they combine, combine very well. Go on. I don't think it's all going to go in there, we've got anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's in front of there, how much have they got? Well, I've got 11 now, and they've got about 10 there. And yeah, back we go. <laughs> you're like the most wanted man uh, in England, I swear. Top top, <laughs> Literally, when I sit with him on the combine or on the tractor, it's like your phone's just like bing, 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 all the yeah. time. <laughs> Growers will be, uh, you could say, paid, rewarded for soil health um, mm -hmm. um, benefits. Um, that they're applying to the land, and there will also that's still being 
um, implemented as we speak, really. So there's been a lot of uh, pilot pilot farms. Yeah. But I still think that the cost the cost for that and the, and the rewards for that are still still sort of through. The but it will certainly be form a big part of the future of agriculture over the yeah. next, um, you know, well, at least ten years. Um, so we're already growing. We were growing mustard as a biofumigant for the PCN problem. And last year we had a radish mustard mix. Was yeah, it? it was a brown, yeah brown, brown mustard, radish, and vetch. Yeah. So, so you had a, yeah. Yeah, and uh, that seemed to work really well. It had two, two effects really. One, uh, one good effect obviously done the biofumigant, mm -hmm. and two, it was good food for the sheep. And then uh, somebody else, a good friend of ours. Worked out that sheep put 45 kilos of N back there in the soil. Yeah, yeah. So we're on a double winner there. Um, and the vetches, am I right, Ed, in saying that the vetches do stuff for the cereal crops? Yeah, we do well. Well, vetches fix nitrogen. Okay. So, so if you imagine it, they, so they, they naturally take the atmospheric nitrogen. Yeah. They store that. Yeah. And basically, when you then come to um, plow, see, well, see, plow, you might just, you yeah. might just chop it up and. It, either incorporate or you might direct drill it, you're essentially getting that free nitrogen. Yeah. So that's why with an element of either so clovers um, and vetches, obviously legumes, yeah. then that's what you could that's what you're that's the that's the cover crop species that uh, fix, yeah. fix nitrogen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what about if you have sheep raising? Do the sheep then poop out double yeah. double the amount of nitrogen? <laughs> <laughs> but it depends on the utilization, but essentially yeah, they so that one the nutrition that they're taking up yeah. the vetch and secondly um, obviously, you're getting back organic manure that's yeah. been digested, and therefore you're getting um, a nutrient balance out of that, which obviously from a vet will be predominantly nitrogen. Yeah, like the nitrogen fixing crops and stuff, we're mm -hmm. doing it to capture the nitrogen. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully, we can put less man made fertilizers on, reduce our bill for that, reduce our impact on the environment. The uh, radishes and stuff we grew last year have a tendency to wriggle through the soil. Yeah, so, so radishes are deeper rooting. So what the radishes do is they, so if you have, um, so whatever crop you have, but especially if you, if you put it in after, say a crop like potatoes, um, then they will essentially suck up that excess nitrogen, not just nitrogen, but it could be um, P and, P and K. Yeah. Um, and so they suck that up and that's essentially st stored, stored, stored within there. So when you then come to um, essentially either yeah. Chop and incorporate it, disc it in, light cultivations, um, then that is then put back into the soil. So essentially, so think about it where you've got your mustards and radishes, which are basically sucking out the nitrogen, the nitrogen and that's in the soil and then putting it back into the soil. And then you've got your like vetches or your legumes, which are, which are taking the, the nutrients from the, um, from the atmosphere and then putting it back in the soil. And, those, and that essentially is forming forming a food source for microorganisms and then that essentially results in increasing organic matter. So over time, by, by doing this, you're increasing your organic matter, which, which like Darren was saying, so reducing your reliance on um, artificial artificial um, fertilizers, know that you're, um, you'll be getting a yield benefit. Yes. Because you know, organic, yeah. organic matter has been declining over the past uh, 20 years because of industrial agriculture yeah. um, and essentially what we're doing now is we're, we're replenishing those soils, we're replenishing the soil structure and we're, we're replenishing the, 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 the makeup of those soils as well. Like Ed was saying about industrial farming and stuff, you know, constant ploughing and, and uh, general, uh, what would you call it, normal cultivations, you know, the soils basically in weather like this, if you went out and ploughed it now, it would just be a dust bowl, you know, so we do have some rain and there's a cover crop in there and the cover crop then not only match your land together, stops it all blowing away. So uh, what, do you, what would you call it? I'm trying to think of the word. Conventional, conventional farming. farming. Yeah. Conventional farming from like the end of the war basically to last few years, maybe 10 years or so, it's just um, been relentless on the land. You know, the longer farms continue down, down, down this route, you should continue to see, to see the benefits. And you should also, I mean, cover crops, not only get the nitrogen, but they're also very good at um, retaining moisture in the soil. Yeah. Well, look at it now, what's it, 31, 32 <laughs> degrees here? It's going to be 34, 35, because yeah, we, you know, we've got you know, exceptional temperatures and we're getting extremes every year. Well, 
your soils and the farms themselves have to be more, more resilient. And really, your soil is your hub for a farm. Your soil is everything. You know, if, if you've got the right soil, you'll be rewarded yeah. accordingly. If, if, you've got, if you've got the wrong soils, then, then unfortunately, in these extreme heat then um then there can be serious consequences yeah. on both yield and quality whether that's cereals uh, <coughs> or potatoes onions then, then then it comes back so that's why you know cover crops is just part of that along with you could say organic manures composts you know they all they all um chip in to help like i said you know get get this organic matter back get the carbon in there get the microorganisms get the earthworms um, working yeah, hard yeah work, working hard and um stay in the farms in good stead for yeah, for the future. Really. Yeah. Well, well it's, it's normally done, done, done as mixtures. You can have straights. I mean, this is where we talked about, about earlier, which is would be economical with regards to if you're looking to um, say, Cheap, re- I like that. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> if you if you're looking to reduce your we talk about uh, biofumigants, which are economical with regards to the fact of dealing with a big pest that can cost a lot in the potato industry. And also you've got, PC, uh, you've got some uh, other, we call nematodes, free-living nematodes, which can affect crops like sugar beet with beet cyst nematode, um, onions, it can affect, like I say, uh, potatoes are free-living as well. You've got certain what I call specialist, yeah. specialist biofumigants, and, and they tend to be your, your mustards, you could say brown, brown mustards. Um, you've got some of the, what we call hot radishes, which release basically a a um as they wriggle through the soil as yeah, they grow, they're they're they? yeah yeah and, and, and they they essentially can can control those levels of of, of, of pcn so reducing your your pest to then benefit for the potato crop afterwards so you've got your straights like like that and you can go for straights such as sometimes just a simple oak could be a black oak if, if you're just looking to sometimes repair the land a bit and, and, and just scavenge and also looking for a bit of a break. But a lot of the time, I'd say a traditional cover crop, you'd have two to three, maximum four um, species within that. I sort of tend to like, I like the sort of the two to three mark. I think you've got to be a bit careful of bridging um, yeah. between between crops. So what do you mean by bridging? Bridging. So, so bridging is where you can... You, species too close together. Yeah, too, too, too close. So if, you, so if you've had a wheat and you go and putting in a... You could say almost a, um, a say even another wheat or triticale or something that's because some of the mixes can't even have a cereal in it. Then, then you can bridge. A lot of that depends on when you take the cover crop down. And what I mean by down is when you when you essentially um, incorporate it. Incorporate it. However you would do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I tend to like like three or mixes. Now you know, the main ones to say on cereals, you tend to go for either um, black oats or rye. Uh, normally, winter rye. If you're looking to take something through the through the whole period, then you've got black oats, which are probably the, almost bred. I mean, obviously, sort of done for for the horse horse feed sector. But black oats were essentially bred almost for cover crops because they're very very good scavengers, and also they they're, they're good at reducing that bridging effect. Because um, also, there's not many oats grown yeah. around here in the east. And they're excellent at scavenging, so they, they will scavenge and they, and they will set their roots down. So they're pretty good also at, at getting rid of bits of compaction. Um, and then you've got things like oil radish, uh, which you can get multi-resistant oil radishes, which deal with what we call pieces nematode and free-living nematodes. Then again, can be done done as a single uh, crop, but I tend to like to... But a traditional oil radish can be very good because they've got, essentially they've got a taproot, which will break up, say if you've got a bit of compaction in the soil in places. Um, and also they, they, they tend to work deeper into the soil profile. So they tend to be able to, when we talk about um, bringing up, taking up nit- nitrogen or P or K, then they'll go deeper in the profile. Uh, and then mustards, which are very good for your biomass. Yeah. So they'll, they'll grow very quickly. Um, so you've got to think about that when you're putting together cover crops where, you know, how quick do you want it to get up and away? Um, then mustard's an excellent one for that. Um, really, really, really good. Also, you've got to be careful if you've got all seed rape in your in your rotation, or you're doing it just just, uh, just before the garter club root. But um, and that's where you know you've got to make sure you're asking the right questions as to yeah. what crops coming next, what crops are following. Um, and then a, a very good one is which is being used more and more now. Not always the cheapest, but it's very, is um, is phacelia is is very good. So phacelia has a a lovely, beautiful um, blue, purpley flower, and a very good pollinator. And 
that's also a very good, similar in a way to black oaks and how they work from a scavenging point of view, but it's something that can provide, um, yeah, some essentially, you know, a bit of, a bit of pollen and nectar for, for the pollinate, yeah, for the pollinators during that, during that period. And then the other one is clovers, which can be very, very good, again, because of being a legume, it can, it can, uh, it can essentially fix, fix, fix nitrogen, quite low in the profile, and uh, that sort of scavenges that top, that top inch of the soil. Mm -hmm. So essentially what you're getting is you're, you're getting a cover crop that's working at different depths in the, in the profile, soil profile, and they're also provide, doing different, different jobs. You can't just chuck any cover crop in there. You do have to ask the right question about what was the yeah. previous crop, what are you about to go into, and what is your target? So for example, if Dan sort of said, oh, well, I've got, you know, I've got really high PC, PCN levels in, in the field, then you'd have to go down the route of being a more specialist um, biofumigant, which, yeah, is, is quite a bit more expensive, but if you compare it to uh, putting, a, putting on, a, on, a, on a nematicide, which yeah. Um, yeah, could do damage to the soil and the price, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, then, then, that, then that, cost, that cost is reduced, and, over time, and you're also getting the added benefit of it can deal with other soil-borne diseases as well in, 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 the, in the soil. So it's, um, yeah, like I say, it's about asking the right questions and, and like I said, knowing the farm, which helps. So Dan and I and yeah. know each other well and know the farm well, that you can, ten you can tailor the mixes to the farms yeah. and the job, it, job you want It's to pretty do. much instant because you know our crops, don't you? Yeah. You know our soil type. Yeah. Um, you can just go, well, I think this would work. And, yeah. and we've done that last year, didn't we? With That's our right. And, and it seems to have worked brilliantly. So yeah. the farmer would ring up for a, you know, he'd want to put a cover crop, interested in putting a cover crop in and then what Ed would do is to work out the soil type, work out what the what the end goal is yeah. and then work out what the following crop's going to be mm -hmm. and what the previous crop's been. Okay. You know, like we were saying about the um, club root on the on the rake from, um, yeah, so from radishes. Radishes and, and stuff, mustard, you know, so. you've got to be careful. You don't go and put a load of radishes in and then decide to grow an oil seed rape. And then you end up with um, club root. Yeah, and the, the rape fairly well failed. So if you, if you want a good, just say standard greening crop that's quick to get away, mustard is a is, is, is a one yeah. is, a, is a very 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 good option. Yeah, I suppose I tend to get probably go more. I've got uh, 50 50 percent um, oil radish and fifty percent mustard because one having having the, the two two species like I said before about um, just. Um, Getting, getting something which roots a bit deeper, yeah, and um, and and essentially you can take out take up that, that that nutrition that's there. Cost is about very pretty much the same between a to the because white mustard tends to be slightly um, higher seed rate than um, than a 50-50 uh, white must white mustard or radish yeah. mix. So if I go go down that, and also by having multi species, you don't know always what the season is going to bring you. Yeah. So by having just a couple couple of species there, you you can deal with you know diff, different conditions. You, the previous crop might might have left in a different state. By having one, sometimes one doesn't always take up because every you know, you have even within fields you have different soil types. You'll have different soil structures, and I think just by having those those two, I think all, all radish is, is very very good at that at that, at that getting that root root, yeah. root root system down there, and, uh, and also like you said about because you have different flowering periods. It also it probably extends that that flowering window as yeah, well. Okay, yeah, yeah. Pushes that on into deeper into winter. Yeah. So I mean, if you wanted something, you know, economical, um, quick to establish, white mustard is fine. Yeah. Um, if, if you want something that's going to do 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 a little bit more, then I'd probably go down a, a, a yeah fifty fifty um, yeah. white mustard and um, radish. Because the stuff I've got in the shed that I bought last year, yeah. well this year I think, um, I think that's more. More dedicated to a bit of everything in it, uh, biofumigant. Yeah, we put a bit of. Uh, so you, got, you had. Uh, it, it all. It not all confuses me a little bit, but <laughs> you know, I just can't remember what's in there. But no, there, sure. there's brown bra bra mustard. Yeah, that's it. Brown mustard, radish, and you had had a had a vetch be in there. So yeah. we, we were looking to get a, a bit of. Um, I think a lot of it was for sore borne diseases, which brown mustards uh, very good at you because they, they do have some glucosinolar um, in them. And then we we were looking for the radish. As we as we discussed there, as to as the benefits of that, and then we're looking at the vets to fix to fix some um, nitrogen. So so that's the only thing uh, going down this route of of, of wanting um, just white mass, which is, which is fine for that. But that's very much going to take up the nutrients that, that are already there. Yeah. So you won't have a vet, so therefore you're you're potentially not going to you're not going to be able to to, to get that 
um, fix fixing your nitrogen yeah. naturally. So yeah. it's just knowing that they're fine, good at that route, but it's just knowing that the pros and cons yeah. of good at that route. Yeah. Would it? Would you be able to put a vetch in with the white mustard, or would that be anti? Totally against what the white mustard, because the white mustard is growing away. Yeah, no, I mean we, we do. You obviously, then start pushing the cost more and more. Then yeah. you start making it. Does. Yeah, yeah. I mean, fetch is fetch is a bit more expensive. So yeah, I mean, you're not talking. Um, yeah, you're not talking. I mean, yeah, you're probably talking a couple of quid a you know a hectare acre yeah. more, yeah. but you are getting more out of it. So you so you fix it. So yeah. it's kind of um, yeah. If you do want to do a little bit. Yeah, you do a little bit. If yeah. you want to do the whole whole, exactly. you go the whole whole. Yeah, thing, so yeah. you kind of you do get out. You know, a lot of time, you know, but like I, it, like I said, it's it's really you're looking for um, to, to tick a box as to what that is. There. And you're, you're absolutely right. You've you know, you've got your mix there, which is a bit more of a which a lot of mix fits well with regards to your sugar beet and your and your and your spuds. And then something for your a bit more for your for your cereals. Yeah. You're going around your cereals, then yeah, you know, having a having more of a sort of brassica and a and a um, vetch of some sort or, or or a legume is 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 gonna is 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 a is a, is a, is a good option um and then before something like pulses i mean a lot of the research is done on black oats and even vetch which sounds weird considering pulses on a you know are, are also legume but there has been good good um yeah a lot of research and results showing uh, benefits off the back of that but no i think for that purpose then just give me another option now, isn't it? Yeah, just, it yeah there we are. Make my mind even more confused. Yeah, now. but so, I mean, the good thing about the, the, the mix that we were just talking about, though, they are very quick to establish. So, yeah. you know, as long as you get that top couple of inches, it's got it's got some moisture just tilled there, around. Yeah, they will go. But you do like any crop, you've got to be patient. Make sure you have got the right conditions. They're, yeah. they're they're not, you know, they won't just grow in any sort of. Thing. Especially the other thing is sometimes like, you sometimes get after after uh, if you get a lot of trash from uh, you know, from from a pre from the previous cereal crop. Sometimes you'll get patchy um, establishment yeah. because that competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll get moisture there, yeah. but you will you will get. Uh, so sometimes it will be will be pa- it will be patchy. Uh, I mean, the other thing to say as well that you know it's um, it's also subject to what nutrition is left after that crop as well. So they do need an element of nutrition to get yeah. to get to get they up need, and away. Need some nitrogen there to get them boosted. And that's and, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Matthew Barber, our good friend. Yeah. Um, he asked, are you noticing any difference in worm count and yields where you've had cover crops? Yeah, I pretty much, I pretty much answered that a minute ago, didn't I, with the white mustard. Um, the thing with our biofumigant mustard, the brown mustard, is I have to incorporate that in before the frost gets to it. Um, so I have to incorporate that in before winter, so end of October. Middle end of October, depending on the year, I have to incorporate it. Um, but if I can leave a white mustard uh, on the field uh, like say for a pheasant strip or whatever, um, the worm the worm count is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. You can just literally turn a spade over and it's full of worms. Um, I just don't know what it is, but the mustard has to not die down, but but um, the the frost and stuff had got to this mustard that I found all the worms in, and um, and it had all died off and laid flat and everything. And then by the time I came along to plough it in, it just the worms loved it. The worms, I guess, were all coming up to feed on the roots of the mustard, and yeah, that's right. yeah. and, uh, and then turn that into uh, what do you call it? It's organic matter. Organic matter. There you go. Yeah. Soil science is a complicated subject. I mean, far I beyond mean, me. Yeah, I mean, far beyond you know myself as well. But essentially, you've got hundreds, if not thousands, of, of uh, different species of, 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 of worms. They all work at different depths, different depths yeah. within the profile, profile of the soil. Um, and essentially, these the cover crops—that's why we call it organic. Right? They're the ones that are turning, you know, it's food for them basically. So they're essentially turning, turning this this green matter into essentially food for the wor- for worms, and then food back for the for, for, the, for the crops. And obviously, if you're feeding it, feeding it, then your the ecosystem within that soil is going to increase. So yeah. where you've got it means basically the ecosystem. And the biodiversity, which is why we call it biodiversity, you know, you've got biodiversity on the land with regards to birds and things, but you've got it in the soil as well. And by having that biodiversity there, essentially it's, it's crop health. Yeah. And that crop, when you say about benefits to yields, then, I mean, it varies because, you know, if, if you're cap- we're capturing, moist, you know, capturing moisture and you're retaining nutrition in the soil, you know, in a year like this year, you, you could be get you could be, I mean, the range, I mean, you could be getting benefits in, say, wheat yields of up to a couple of, 
ton of hectare, plus you know yeah. you get a legacy as well from it. So it can not only just benefit the crop that you're about, you're about to drill after or plant after the cover crop, it could be the crop after that. Yeah. So you know, essentially, if you increase your organic matter, you will increase your yields. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's um, I have to I have to point out that the cover crop things is not a one year deal. No. It's um, four to eight years cycle. You know, if you're going to do it and you're going to do it properly and you want returns, then four years, three or four years maybe, um, I would say would be minimum to do it. See, yeah. Where you've got an opportunity to get a cover crop in, get a cover crop as long as the conditions yeah. are right, get them in because and, and you will. You'll continue to, you know, go down there. What we call um, ICM, which is integrated, integrated crop management, um, and your, and essentially your um, your rotation is going to going to benefit. But a rotation is exactly that. A rotation, you got the full course rotation, everything yeah. you're and, But that rotation is is continuous. Yeah. So, you know, where you've obviously there is a pinch point. If you've reached your maximum organic matter status, then you could say. You know we're, we're we're sorted. You know we, we we don't need to put no you know don't need to put cover crop in now or even you know um, you can you know, sit, sit, back, you know, sit, sit back, back sit back sit back. But I, I think there's very few very few um, cover crop growers that would yeah, do that. Yeah, well, not that. I think it's just very few soils that are at that point. That's why. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. why there's so much about you know getting 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 the soil health back up is because of our organic matter is lower. Yeah. So um, yeah, so basically the more organic matter we have in the soil, the, the bigger yields you'll get, the better crop health you'll get. Okay, so we have another question from Mayflower Potatoes and he said, drilling dates, establishment methods, what species and the reasons why you do it. Is that for a potato crop? Uh, I, yeah, I, I don't know. He, he, well, yeah, I, 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 his I, I, name I, is Mayflower I, Potatoes, but um, yeah, yeah. shall we shall we base it on potatoes? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's a potato man. So yeah, yeah. So well, potatoes, obviously, yeah. Like we said before, I think subject to if you've got obviously PCN or free living nematodes in your soil, then then going down the biofumigant um, route is, is 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 a good one, and that could either be a single species or you you can have multi species but it's a different management for that you know you have to drill that um sort of normally directly after uh after a cereal might you know might be sort of like a um like a barley or or, or a wheat and you need about three about 12 week window in which to grow that get it up get it established then you what you do is you, you chop it you incorporate it into the soil and then you, you essentially roll it and seal it and that seal it basically breaks the light basically breaks the life cycle of the of the um of the PCM, which is potatoes nematodes, yeah. and uh, and that helps to reduce it. Now the hit rate varies. It varies from sort of could be as low as sort of twenty percent, but it could be as high as seventy percent because it's subject to to, to how, how the crops grow and the conditions conditions with, with, which it's in. The other one that's very good with potatoes is because of now that either before or was I mean before you can go with something very simple like a black oak vetch, um, which again you know potatoes need plenty of um, grub. So the vetch will provide that, and the black oats will give it a nice settlement before getting that. If it's after potatoes, um, then obviously you're trying to get the land back into order because you think about all the machinery that's gone over yeah, there. Yeah, compaction issues. And yeah, stuff. then you're probably looking at something that's a bit deeper rooting, which is when you're starting to go down your your your, your, your radish radish type root and your brassica type root to try and basically replace the soil, suck up some of that excess um, uh, you know, nitrogen or or P and K and other other nutrients so you're trying to suck that up and put that back in the soil and essentially get you know, start start to repair the soil structure from what what the potato crop would have would have um, adhered onto the, onto yeah, the I, think, I think the biofumigants are a bit more because they're very much on you know you've got a certain time frame and, and they need they need the temperature so you need to be chopping and incorporating rates around 10, 10 degrees yeah. there is a bit of science to say below that has has still some efficacy but generally that with the other cover crops, you have got much much wider window with regard, but it's it's all around yeah moisture. I mean, if you yeah. haven't got more, any any crop, you know, obviously rate this year is going to struggle to be drilled because because um, there's not not the moisture yeah. there, and it's the same for uh, and it's the same. Obviously, cereals will lay their door, you know, they can they can sit there for quite a while before they they go. But really, you want to be wait wait for the right conditions, and then um, and then. And then, and then and then get them in. But most of, most of the stuff is done by probably mid September, sometimes later later, later yeah. than that. Can can go into sometimes October. It depends on the season. If we end up with a longer, uh, you know, you know sort of potentially dry season, then, then you can't wait. But that's where you'd probably have to go with your more brassica brassica yeah. type species, which are quick quick to establish. Yeah. So. We've got three different methods of establishing it, but we found the best one is obviously you can plough and combination drill it. 
and then you can put a terror cedar on a terror disc, which works quite well. Dad done a field twice, and on the second time he drilled it, which was good. On the second pass over, Dad drilled the cover crop, and he and he got on better. Last year, that that mix, the radish, the vetch, and the yeah. um, mustard mix, I drilled it straight in with the vertistat. Um, I wish I'd put my uh, Grange machinery toolbar on. I wish I'd put that on just to break a bit of compaction up, give a bit more tilth, but it, it grew fine, and, and the sheep were on there for. Uh, three months, Danny. So, so I think there are cover crops, mixes that are more for you say, livestock. With those, you tend to go with um, sort of red kale type mixes in terms of do with stubble turnips, which they can feed off. But they're very good. You know, sheep are excellent. I must say. I mean, that's one thing which cover crops is brought. But I mean, in the east, you'd be better used to see a sheep, basically. Yeah. I mean, um, whereas now there's a lot, there's a lot more sheep about. And sheep are excellent at. Um, Essentially, that they're one of the best grazers, and they're, and they're very good with basically chopping in and yeah. well, I'd say, of, of, um, basically breaking down um, the the, um, the, 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 sort of the the excess soil and and also taking that nutrition and put it back back into soil. So having sheep back into back into um, fields and crop and within within our um, rotation, you could say. A small Suffolk farmer said. What's a good cover crop before spring beans? Uh, well, the reset, black oats is really good. So you could do black oats. Um, uh, you could go, I'd probably go black oats vetch or black oats uh, radish would probably be, be the roots. That's, and that's based off uh, research that, that's, that's been done at, at, at sort of I'm allowed to say PGRO, am I allowed to say sort of yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah. yeah. yeah so, so, <laughs> yeah, go for it. so, so, so that, but obviously that that research continues to. But essentially, the reason why that is 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 most pulses, peas and beans, you know, they they need they, one. Obviously, they need they need the break from from the previous um, previous could be bean or pea crop, um, but also they do need good soil conditions. Otherwise, they do pick up what, what a lot call. of tilth. Yeah, a yeah. lot of tilth and a real good start yeah, to life. Yeah, exactly. And then, but beans have done really well the last cu cu couple of years. So um, yeah, they've, they've come back to being a popular, which is high in protein, which is what, what we're wanting in our diet at the moment. Yeah. yeah. So um, so yeah, I'd probably go for something as sim simple as that, uh, and and you'll and you'll get yeah you'll get uh, ju ju just rewards for for it. Yeah. So. Uh, and the last one that we had was from I hope I say this right North Sea guy. What are the advantages of putting a cover crop into crop rotation? Well, I think we've explained fairly we have, well. Yeah. yeah, fairly well. Should we just well, have a bullet the, point summary? The, um, the advantages for us is um, redu reduction in PCM problem. Um, I had the sheep on there. Uh, and Which fertilise? Yeah, the sheep, sheep poo has done, well, they reckon 45 kilos a, a hectare of, um, of nitrogen Actually. back into the soil. So yeah. not only have I reduced my PCM problem, I've also fed some sheep, beneficial to the sheep farmer, and then the sheep who is beneficial to me. So yeah, you, you're, you're also reducing your disease yeah. pressure in there. So, so from your other crops, especially from um, from cereals, if you've got a lot like in this part of the world, you've got a lot of cereals, you, you need to bring yeah. those disease cycles up. And by, by putting a cover crop in, you're uh, you're essentially doing. And uh, the one thing we haven't really well, we scratched on it, but I um, mean the one the one massive th thing for um, for us is uh, is the pollinators. Um, all of the insects and stuff are thriving in, in our mustard fields and in our in our cover crop. Yeah, I mean, yeah, right. I mean, be beneficials are becoming uh, are extremely important. And they're yeah. becoming more important as we lose um, insecticides. You know, we've got in potatoes. There's a big pest called called wire, wire worm. Yeah. So um, and uh, you know, most mostly birds that be, that, that eat that, but by attracting them, basically, word through, through um, worms and then also through. Um, Having beneficial insects, especially with things like aphids, um, then yeah, you're right. Having having your you know pollen and nectar type type um, species in there is is going to just help to keep keep these at level and keep keep food production where 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 yeah. we want it. Right. Yeah. Any specific cover crops that would be awesome at capturing carbon? Well, they're, not, they're all. I mean, they're all good. But basically, if you're producing good good years, you, you're cut. But you know, the, the last thing you want is bare field. Exactly. Basically. The, yeah, you know, the land is is one of the best. Stick it is like a is like a carbon store. We're in, yeah. we're in a store now. Yeah. Imagine mm -hmm. that underground. Basically, you get the more bi bi biodiversity. Well, that carbon is then kept kept um, within that. So you're not then re you know releasing um, you know, CO two in, into the, into the atmosphere. 
Um, and also not that, but the carbon gas too it has effects on everything. Because obviously, if you're reducing, um, if you're reducing your fertilizer inputs, you're reducing the, the nitrous oxide that's going up, up in, yeah. going up into reliant, the, reliant the on gas and everything. Yeah. So I mean, that, that's why it's so big. Yeah, because obviously, it's to, for us to try and get these um, CO2 levels un, under un, under control. Uh, and, and, you know, it's, it's, we've got a bank, you know, the farmers have a bank of soil, uh, of, of, of carbon in there, and, and they're, they're the keepers of it, and so they're going to play a huge yeah. part. Um, and cover crops is, cover cro crops in general are, are essentially part of that, and every, every time you leave the ground bare, then essentially your, yeah, your sort of, that, that carbon loss is, is present. Oh, we'll, put Ed, we'll put Ed's email in the link in the description, and... Um, yeah, and then you can you can get hold of Ed any time. Any questions? Any questions? Any yeah, any mixes away. you want? Far away, but like yeah. I said, everything. I mean, now is not really the time to be buying cover crops. It's, it's um, you should already have them in store already. But if you're growing, if you're going to grow them in the spring next year for a following crop, then you're laughing. I think. Maybe what we can do is, if anyone has any like future questions, if there's you know lots of other questions on cover crops, we might have to do maybe like a. A sequel yeah. to, to today, you know. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Really appreciate Thank you coming you out today. Much. Thank you. Thank you for the cool. It'd be nice to get out of this shed. I reckon it's hotter <laughs> in here than it is out there.